Hello, my friend. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come your way through this Ambassador of Hope telecast. The message you are going to see and hear has been specially put together with you in mind. You and I know that we live in a, a world that is full of pain, discouragement, disillusionment, and lost hope. But we believe that in God, there's no hopeless situation. God can turn your situation around. Wherever you may be, or whatever stage you may be in right now, is not a dead road. The bend in the road is not the end of the road. And we believe that by following these messages, God is going to turn your situation around. So I want you to sit down, relax, enjoy this message, and I'll come back to you in a short while. Enjoy. Somebody say prepare. prepare. Am I helping you? Yes. You want to do very well in business this year. Prepare for your business. Go to the seminar. Learn something about business. Hear me. We want to build a very balanced church here. Where we marry the spirit and the natural. You cannot have a good axe to fell trees when it's only the axe head. It needs a wooden handle. The spirit and the flesh come together. So you cannot attend eternal prayer meetings and not have some wisdom. You become a prayerful fool. I don't care what anybody does that they can prophesy to you and tell you everything. How many things have not been said about you? What have you done about it? What have you done about Listen, every prophet can come and say the same thing about you. My question here, as your teacher, as your father is, what have you done about it? Because God will not promote you beyond the last instructions that he gave to you. Thank you. Am I helping somebody? Prepare. Prepare for your breakthrough. You are looking for a breakthrough. Have you prepared yourself? Elisha said to the woman, go and borrow, borrow vessels and don't borrow a few. You are looking for an oil business, an oil miracle. I don't know if I'm speaking in the spirit or in the natural, but there's somebody you are looking for an oil business. But how many vessels, how many people, how many contacts have you made? As a church, are we prepared for church growth? We talk about church growing, but listen, church doesn't grow in a vacuum. Is somebody hearing me? It's our collective responsibility. And my question is, who have you brought to church? I watch. And I keep silent. Who have you brought? Who have you invited? I don't care who you are. Who have you brought? Who have you brought into and make sure... I read a scripture in John 15 that blessed me. It said, you did not call me. You did not choose me, but I chose you. That you may go and bear fruit. That your fruit will remain. So that anything that you ask me, I will give to you. If I were you, I will go and make souls and, then, and I will ask God for anything. <laughs> we will come to that later. But somebody say prepare. Let me begin to run. My time is almost done. Number two, position yourself. So prepare yourself, position yourself. If you're going to pursue God this year and find some amazing things, you have to do what I call strategic positioning. When Israel was about to enter into their promised land, God said to Joshua, tell the people, sanctify yourself. In other words, position yourself for tomorrow I will do wonders. Your wonders are always predicated. Ladies and gentlemen, by your positioning. When you position yourself right, God will do some amazing things in your life. 2016 is going to be, be filled with paths and places we haven't been there before. We have not traveled in 2016 before. But I am confident that 2016 would not be like 2015. Is somebody hearing me? It's going to be better. It's going to be greater. It's going to be amazing. But you have to position yourself. You position. When, when Israel, when, when, when King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20, when they were going to fight, God said that this battle is not yours. It's my battle. It's my But this is what I want you to do. Position yourself and see God do something. Tomorrow, go down and meet them. So you need to position yourself wisely. Many of you have tremendous graces and abilities, but your positioning is wrong. If you have a talent... Today, I want to talk to you as a father. Let's say you have a talent as a musician. When was the last time you showed up at practice and positioned yourself? 
Let's say you play drums. Nothing personal. And somebody who plays it better than you comes. What are you going to do? Don't you think it is a free training that God has brought to you? So you position yourself by the person and take those lessons for free. Rather than say, ah, so they say, when they see new people, they don't remember the old people. That is an old song. Stop it. That is a song of losers. Amen. That's why I'm waiting for some of you to begin to preach and teach better than me so I can sit down. I, I'm serious. You should hear what I tell my pastors and my leaders. I'm really serious. I want to retire early. Just sit down and do nothing. That's my hobby. Just sit down and do nothing. But by the way, you have to be careful when you sit down and do nothing. Give you a leadership principle. A rabbit going through the forest. This is wisdom. Got to the base of a tall tree. Heard a little noise. The rabbit looked up and saw a crow. Watched the crow for some time. The crow was sitting there doing nothing. The rabbit said to crow, Yo, crow! Crow said, Alright, rab. What's up, Rob? He said, you are sitting there doing nothing. I've been watching you. Bro said, sure, I'm sitting, I'm chilling, man. And the rabbit said, can I also sit here and do nothing and chill? He said, sure, man. The rabbit sat there. And in a short while, a fox came and ate it. The wisdom is that if you're going to sit down and do nothing, you better be high up. So when your boss at work, you think, oh, as for these bosses, they sit down and they do nothing. You better fight and get high up too, so you also can do nothing. Am I helping somebody? You better also fight your way to the top, because many times, the bottom people, they complain. And look, my boss, they take too many holidays, and they are always on vacation. Yes, they are boss. Get up there too, and do it to the glory of Almighty God. This year, pursue the top. I say, pursue the top. In the name of the Lord, I command you to resign from the bottom and begin to go upward. I said, upward, upward, upward. I speak promotion to come upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Rise to the glory of my God because the bottom is too, is too crowded. That is why you need, some of you, you need to own your businesses so that you can set your own schedule. Amen. Position yourself. And also in positioning yourself, please, be watchful about who you position yourself with. Associate yourself. 2016, please, take stock of your friendships. I am begging you by the message of God, don't have an accidental friend. You don't need the whole world to like you. Is somebody hearing me? You don't need the whole world to like you. Friends, they de can determine your destiny. The book says that he that walks with wise men shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall suffer. I have a question for somebody. Who is your friend? Do you know how many people have died because of friends? Do you know how many people have made bad choices because of friends? This 2016, position yourself. Listen, you cannot rent a room in a hospital and not expect to have a virus. The people you hang around, they are so important. They will affect you. I read a scripture one time, pastor, and it bothered me. God asked the children of Israel that if somebody is holy and you associate with that person, you touch that person, do you also become holy? They said no. And he said if somebody is contaminated, and you associate or touch that person, do you become contaminated? They said yes. I looked at it and I realized that the effect of bad friends sometimes can be more powerful than the effect of good friends. Because I told you we have been wired as human beings. Unless, unless you let the spirit and the word just renew your mind. We are wired to love negativity. That is why you remember bad news more than good news. If you remember half of the good things that you are taught in a church every year, you will be flying in orbit by now. When you were in second grade, a teacher insulted you. You still, you still remember it today. And yet what was preached on Thursday night, you have forgotten. That is, you have to be intentional. Hear me. In 2016, as you pursue God, be very careful the people you surround yourself with. 
Not every friend is a friend. Where you are going to hear me, there are some people that must not go there with you. Not everybody can go where you are going. And so sometimes God will have to evict some people for you. If you don't believe me, ask Adam and Eve. God evicted them. God still does evictions. You don't need people that tell you everything about people. God bless you. Thank you for clapping. Because some of you haven't grown because you are always listening to something. And the day you hear about you, that is when the Holy Spirit begins to minister to you to go to another church. You go and meet you there. Because everywhere you go, you carry your whole self there. Somebody say, friends. I have a question. Who is your friend? Who speaks into your life? Who tells you the truth? Who will look at you in the eye and tell you, as for this makeup? They may mistake you for a traffic light. Can you tone it down a little bit? Look at me straight. I don't want any trouble. Thank you, sir. Traffic light, yeah. Just change colors. Just change colors. I mean, by all means, have the makeup. That's okay. But you must have... Because how many of you have seen people come on television and you wonder, did they leave home alone or they had somebody talk to... Anybody see what I'm talking about? Like, did anybody talk to them before they left home? You must have friends like that. That even when you dress up, they must be able to tell you that this is low and behold. They don't understand it. Let me try you here. As you know those low and behold. Like all your things are ousters. Can you cover please? Because if you are not for sale, please tear down the advert. For the life of me, I can't understand how you can come to God's house and half of your body is out. What, what, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? What are you trying to advertise? Meanwhile, that thing is not even yours. You have just it with all kinds of things and it's like, give us a break. And now the genuine ones say, all of you think you are genuine. You are sinners. You need to repent. <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. That is why you need. <laughs> Listen, those kinds. Of, um, let me be. Can I? Can I be real with you? You see, those kind of things that you do, they attract men. They don't attract marriage. So keep advertising. What kind of men wants to somebody that everybody has seen? I see somebody being like, yeah, do it. <laughs> Listen to me. 2016, there are some people you should let them depart. And when they go, please stop crying. Give them a fitting barrier and move on. Is somebody hearing me? You know, when you were born, God didn't give you a list of names and say, if so and so and so and so and so and so don't go with you, you can't make it. You came alone and there are some dimensions, ladies and gentlemen, that you must prefer to walk alone than to walk in company of people who will not help you. Some friends are nothing but excess baggage in the journey of life. You must be courageous, you must be bold, have some mental fortitude and say that, hey, if you are not going up with me, I'm not coming down with you. These friends, when your left shoe is on your right leg and your right shoe, left shoe, they look and say it's nice. So, if you have a friend like that, you don't need enemies. You are frenemies. Number three, passion. Number three, passion. Let me run. Let me run. Let me run. Let me run. Am I helping somebody? What is number one? Number two. Number three, have passion. Pursue demands passion. Paul said that I press. Another translation says I strive. Another translation says I reach forth. Another translation says I, I, I push. There must be passion. There are too many people who are passionless. Passionless. You need that ingredient. Hear me. Passion is a motivation that is stronger than death. Paul said in Acts 20, he said, Behold, I go bound in my spirit to Jerusalem. 
Not knowing the things that will befall me there, except the Holy Spirit witnesses in every city that bonds and afflictions abide in me. But none of these things move me, neither do I count my life as dear unto myself, that I may finish my course. Paul says that in the light of what he has given me to do, and the genuine witness of the Holy Spirit that prison, bonds and afflictions are waiting for me, my passion drives me. Passion is a motivation that will worry life until it gives you what you want. You must have a passion about life. You must have a passion about ministry. You must have a passion about what God has given you to do. Because God watches your passion. There must be, you must be passionate. The psalmist said in Psalm 42 verse 1. That as the deer pants, longs for the water brooks. So my soul longs after you. Longs after you the living God. There must be that passion. There must be a want to. A desire. That this year I want to do something. I said in my opening remarks, life will not give you what you want because you look nice. Your passion, your drive, there must be passion about you. Paul was motivated to press on. Amen. Hear me. When passion for something dies, there's no press again, there's no fire. Many people have died. Some are sitting, some are watching me on radio and on television right now. You have died and you have been buried with your gifts. There are people in cemeteries, like Akwesi said, I'm sure they died with their potential books that the world needed, but were never written. Some of you, please, you have songs on the inside. If you die with your song on the inside of you, we will resurrect you and discipline you before we let you die again. You are what, Look at some of the things that people sing and you buy. And I hear you and I'm wondering what is wrong with some of these people. Because there's no passion. You can't, you can't do a trade-off. That maybe I need to wake up two more hours early and go to the studio. Everything good comes with a price. You must have passion. People that hang around me sometimes ask me, Pastor, how do you do this? I am passionate with my job. That is why I get here before every leader. And I live here when everybody is gone. It's passion. So when he blesses me, leave me alone. That is why I don't apologize for my blessing. Passion. You must have some passion. You allow things to die. CDs that were never done. Movies that were never shot. They are all sitting on the inside of you. Why? Because somewhere along the line, you allow the devil and people's situations and circumstances to suck the life out of you. And your passion died. May passion come back to the church. Uh, 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 uh. I say may passion come to somebody. I have a question. What does it take to stop you? Your true metal is not the, your achievement, but where you rose up from in spite of obstacles. Passion must drive you. Amen. No, I've seen some of you have been tired indefinitely. Frustrated incognito. Disappointed. So you let your dream, your passion. Can I digress a little bit? Give me just a few minutes. Let me, what kills passion? There are some things that can kill your passion. Number one is familiarity. I was sharing with some of the leaders this morning about this. That we'll talk, you know, in, in medical terms, they have something called the silent killer. High blood pressure. And this man, the, the announcement will come. We are doing a health seminar. And I want all of you to attend. Because you can be sick and not know it. Prevention is better than cure. People that I see jogging in the morning, I've never seen any of them that really needed it. But they needed it. But hear me. Familiarity Kills passion. I'm going to say some heavy duty things. Nuclear weapons. Before I sit down. Anytime you get too familiar. With a preacher. With a church. With the presence of God. With the Bible. Your passion begins to wane. That is why lady. Until you give yourself to him. He will chase you with passion. The moment you give him. What he has to commit to get. No passion. That is why one of the one of the one of the worst things that you can ever do is to do cohabitation. If you are not good enough to be married, you are surely not good enough to be cohabitation. To be to cohabit, uh, you won't say, "Man, I'm trying it here." It's quiet. Uh, am I helping you? Because he has seen it all. What does he care? Familiarity breeds babies. They breed contempt too. You are thinking. I want you to think. Familiarity. Oh yeah. You remember the first time you came to church and you heard Pastor Frank? I think, wow. 
People sometimes even ask, is he African? Tell me that Africans are stupid, eh? Really? They haven't met people like me. We represent Africa. The Africa arising. The new Africa. Not the one they shoot on, on television and come and lie to America. Some of you haven't traveled, please. Especially you are the African Americans. Go to Africa and see. Some of the cities, you enter there and say, hi. They are nicer than DC. You know DC? <laughs> they lie to you. America's greatest terrorist is not ISIS, it's your media. Lie to you. The cities, you go there, go to Kigali in Rwanda. Just go and see with your eyes. Go to Kof Town, go see. <laughs> you have skyscrapers in Kof Town. Skyscrapers. They're on the side of the hill, the mountain. Skyscrapers. In my home, those of you who know my home in Kof Town, my daddy saw it's a skyscraper, it's on a hill. <laughs> City set on the hill cannot be hidden. It's sitting there white as a skyscraper. A skyscraper goes with steps. I was wanted to fulfill scripture. Tale of 39 steps. <laughs> Passion. Somebody say familiarity. Please don't get familiar. Especially with the anointed. It doesn't help you to see. How many of you have Bibles in your hands? Let me show you something. Pick it up. It's on your, it's on your phone, whatever. You just pick it up. I want you to look at your scripture. Where, if it's a scripture or note, whatever, just look at it. Begin to read it. Just read, just read. Whatever is on it, unless it's something you don't want people to hear, just start reading. Just read. Whatever you have in your hand, look at it and read. Just read, read. You read, read. We are doing an exercise. Read. As you are reading now, bring it closer to your face. Go ahead. And still read. Keep reading. Closer, closer. Closer. All the way to your nose. Let it touch your nose. Read, read. Can you read it? Did the writing disappear? But why couldn't you read it? Too close. When you get too close to the anointing, it's there, but you can't, you can't see it. Familiarity. The second thing that kills passion is, 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 is approval addiction. Some of you are addicted to people's approval. So, what did they think about me? You really want to know? They think you are a jerk. But nobody has been gracious enough to tell you. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Please look at me. Passion attracts and passion repels. When you have passion, there are some people that will be attracted to you. And when you have passion, some people too will not like you. That you to what? I the only one in the church. And somebody too can look at your passion and say, man, you challenge me. So you must have this single Paul said that I have this intensity. I don't care who praises me and I don't care who criticizes me. One of the greatest sure marks of maturity is your ability to keep an even head in the face of criticism and in the face of praise. When the snake bit Paul and he shook it into the fire, they called him a murderer. He didn't say anything. When he didn't die, they said he's a god. He didn't say anything. That is maturity. Some of you are addicted to other people's approval. And my question is, what do you do when the people that approve you are not there? The reason why many of you are middle of the road Christians is because you are afraid of what people will say about you. What people say about you is not as important as what God says about you. I say it all the time. Human beings, so long as they have mouth, after they finish eating, they will use it to talk. And people don't talk about people who don't matter. That is why you are not on the, fr on, on the front page of CNN. Because you haven't done things, not taking guns, but something, you know. Every Friday on the news, ABC, person of the week, you haven't been there yet. You'll be there. For the right reasons. Another one is, what kills passion is when you have options. When you have options. You can, let me give you that last one. I have plenty, but that's it. Because when you have too many options, you commit to nothing. As long as you keep your options open, you never work at that thing. Again, marriage. I always have the option to divorce. So why do I have to work it? And when I divorce, there are other people in line. To a penny. All my village girls, they want to marry me. I'm from in America. 
when I go back for Christmas, they line up. So why, why should I worry about you? And some men, some of the words that can come out of your mouth to your wives. I'm thinking about what should be done to you, but I'm too holy to say it on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I don't know what to say to some of the words that some men can say to women. It's not funny. So somebody say passion. I have a question. What wakes you up every day? I'm not saying who because you must define this thing in life that it is not who motivates you that matter. It is what motivates you that matters. What makes you wake up? What makes you stay up late? What makes you do the things that you are doing? What is your motivation? Let me give you the last one. I'm gone. I'm gone. Have I helped you? What is the first one? Number two? Number three? The last one. And I'm giving this to you because you are going to need it. Every morning, take two of it. Every afternoon, two. Every evening, two. Two, two a day. Is persevere. Somebody say persevere. Please get it straight. Nothing of abiding value, nothing that pursues with comes without a fight. You must cultivate the attitude of fortitude. You must persevere. Make up your mind now that nothing is going to stop you. Because when you have perseverance, when you have fortitude, when you have that stickability, even hell cannot stop you. The true measure of a man or woman is determined by what it takes to stop you. I have a question. What does it take to stop you? Here what St. Paul the Apostle said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, 4, 8, 8 and 9. In the Living Bible here, he said, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but not crushed and broken. We are perplexed because we don't... We are perplexed, but we don't give up and quit. We are hunted down, but God never abandons us. We don't understand why the things that happen to us happen. But we keep on moving. I like that. Because hear me, there are a lot of things God will not explain why you are going through. Because it is not what happens to you that matters. It's your attitude to what happens to you that matters. And it is what happens in you that matters. He says we get knocked down, but we get up again. We keep going. Can that be your story? Let nothing stop you. This year is our year of pursuit. Prepare yourself for great things. Position yourself strategically. If there are places that you go to that are not good for you, don't. Amen? I will counsel you, stay in this church and stay under this anointing. People say, oh, that church is already big. Come and help us. You are not the Holy Spirit. Please tell them, me, myself, I need help. It's all these little, little things that is, oh, as for that church, nobody will see you. Is this a singing context? Hear me. If you want to be known, God will make sure you are known. Then you find out that you don't want to be known. Ask Princess Diana. You can be so known that you don't want to be known. Serve in the house. Bloom where you are planted. Amen. That's when I came here, I never pulled anybody from anybody's church. Never did it. Never will. Final thing, persevere. Whatever comes your way, don't give up. My name is Franco Fosuapia, and I approve this message. I hope this message has spoken into some interesting and intimate places in your life, and that you've been blessed and you've been encouraged by the word of God. You know something? We are still of the persuasion that there's nothing that is too late there's nothing that is too far gone that God cannot help. And there's no barrier that is strong enough to stop you. The beautiful thing is that we have a church right here in this city, the Carey's House, where Sunday, Wednesday, Fridays, we have some very amazing times in the presence of God. And I want to specially invite you to any of our services. The information will be given on your screen, and I hope to meet you there. Finally, I want to say thank you again for tuning in into this broadcast. I hope to see you on the next episode on this same station. Meanwhile, this is your Ambassador of Hope, Franco Fosuapia. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Advanced Life in Relentless Pursuit of Leadership Excellence.